Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now today's topic is about gray hair. Now something that I've had to deal with personally since the age of, uh, I guess 11, since sixth grade. And there's been lots of theories as to what causes gray hair. Of course, genetics is always a big factor. And if you know you have the genetics of, you know, premature gray hair and turning gray hair early like I do, then today's topic is even more important because there are lifestyle factors that will surely accelerate the graying of your hair and also actually speed up hair loss and thus balding, both men and women. So make sure you listen to everything in today's video and also look at the special resources and links below this video in the description area. Now, before I continue with the primary cause that triggers and accelerates the graying of hair based on the newest research worldwide, let me first do a quick introduction as to the biological factors that actually cause graying of hair. The first is melanin, and there's a there are pigment cells called melanocytes in your hair follicles which give your hair its color, and that's called melanin. Basically, when you stop producing this melanin, hair begins to turn gray. And melanin, as you may know, also controls your skin color. Basically, the more melanin typically means the darker your skin. And for simplicity's sake, you know, blondes and redheads have less melanin, thus they have lighter skin and lighter hair color. Now, people will usually start to see a few gray hairs beginning after the age of 30. Sadly, each decade increases the number of gray hairs by 10 to 20 percent. So it gets really bad quickly. Now, as I said earlier, my first gray hair was in sixth grade, which means I was about 11 years old. And for a variety of reasons, like I said, it's probably due to genetics that I had this premature graying because so did my mom. Okay, so now we know how gray hairs happen, but what causes this decrease in melanin? Now, again, there's lots of theories such as mineral or vitamin deficiencies, lack of certain proteins, and so forth. But in the real world, this is rarely the case. Now, trust me, I've seen old homeless people who have a full head of hair with like zero gray hair. And trust me, they are, quote unquote, very nutrition deficient and lacking a healthy diet. Okay. Now, in 2019, researchers discovered that going gray is simply a buildup of hydrogen peroxide in your hair particles, which basically bleaches your hair from the inside. So, usually an enzyme called catalase helps break down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And unfortunately though, as you get older, catalase, this enzyme, production starts to slow down. And the end result is hydrogen peroxide starts to accumulate and build up in the body and it ends up quote unquote bleaching out the hair's pigment and slowly turns your hair white. So a decade ago, I decided to actually take catalase enzymes uh, by itself, you know, in a supplement form to help reduce and prevent this from happening, you know, the degradation of the hydrogen peroxide and so forth. Unfortunately, I honestly didn't see much positive effects and I tried higher dosages for almost basically an entire year. And there's been unfortunately no evidence since taking such supplements for improving gray hair and and unfortunately the FTC has warned these supplement makers about it. Now that's not to say taking catalase enzyme is bad and I think this antioxidant even though it is an enzyme has many health and longevity benefits. However, when it comes to reversing gray hair or even preventing it, there's really no evidence to support it. So if you can afford it, go ahead and take it. No harm, no foul. But you know, if you're not, if money's an issue, then I would hold back. So now comes the newest research, which is backed by clinical studies and even more importantly, empirical real world evidence, and that's stress. Recently in January 2020, researchers from Harvard University saw a direct correlation to stress and graying of hair due to melanin loss, which again, I spoke about earlier. Now, simply stated, when you're under extra stress, your body produces chemicals called, uh, you know, norepinephrine or adrenaline. And you probably heard that whole fight or flight response. And this is how it works. Again, I'm making this really simple. Okay. And as this happens, your body quickly produces a massive surge of cortisol, the stress hormone. On a side note, cortisol is a steroid. Okay. But it's a catabolic steroid. It tears down 
you don't necessarily want this. While testosterone is an anabolic steroid, it helps build up. Thus, athletes take anabolic steroids such as testosterone to build muscle. They would never take catabolic steroids such as cortisol because it eats away muscle and actually increases body fat. Yet, doctors readily prescribe these catabolic cortisol steroids such as prednisone to help reduce inflammation in people which accelerates both hair loss and graying of hair and just basically tears down the entire body. It's not a good way and yet all these doctors do it. Now going back to the original research, they stated that quote unquote, after just a few days, all the pigment regenerating stem cells were lost again due to the stress and once they're gone, you can't regenerate pigments anymore. The damage is permanent. This is why managing stress is so important. Now, let's look at real-world situations in my own life. Um, a very close family member of mine went through a divorce a few years ago. Now, he seemed pretty cool on the outside, and he said, hey, it needs to be done. But within a year, he lost a ton of head hair, and a lot of it also went gray. It was shocking. Some of it grew back, but it all grew back gray. On a different note, a close friend of mine started a very successful business recently about four or five years ago. And he has an amazing head of black hair, all right? He's almost 50, you know, around my age, but his hairline is that like of a 12-year-old. Perfect. Yet, in the past two years, I've seen at least 30 or 40 gray hairs on his head. And I just mentioned it to him a few weeks ago. And I said, hey, man, you know, what's up with all the gray hairs? And he said, I know. I think it's all the stress I'm dealing with. I got dozens of these examples, and maybe you do as well. Now, myself, I do color my hair, or else I have a lot more grays, and honestly, I just don't like it. But before I colored my hair, you know, when I was younger, people, you know, would say, hey, wow, why do you have so much gray hair? You must be under a lot of stress, because, you know, I had a lot of gray, and I'd walk around, and before I colored it, and honestly, it was annoying, always hearing people say, hey, are you under stress? Are you stressed? Why are you so stressed? It was like, Hey, man, listen, this is just my genetics. I don't know. Remember, genetics is always a big factor. However, I can't deny that I tend to push myself, all right? Um, I don't stress out, but I do, you know, that whole adrenaline and going, going, going. That's me. I don't sleep much. You know, I was always going to school and then working at the same time and exercise on top of it, you know, and lack of sleep and all that. My body's going, 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 going. That's just part of my genetics. And this is why I formulated and started taking a product called Stress and Cortisol Relief almost 10 years ago because I knew I needed to do something to force my stress levels to come down because my lifestyle couldn't do it. And since then, my progression of gray hairs has for sure decreased tremendously. Okay, I can tell when I color my hair, I don't have to color as often. Now, obviously, it has not stopped, all right? It didn't permanently stop all that, okay? But it has slowed it down a lot. And thus, I wish I had started it earlier because I would have had less gray hair. Okay, that's the thing. As with everything, you know, prevention is more important. It's easier to maintain than to gain. So that's the one thing I can tell you is you're concerned about gray hair, start managing your stress levels. And if you can't do it because we all live crazy lifestyles, take stress and quarters of relief. It really works. And you get more information below this video. However, there's a second thing. I also take uh, a supplement called Inflame and Pain Relief because it helps manage and decrease inflammation, which is directly linked to hair loss and graying of hair. Of course, stress also increases inflammation. So I take both of these. And lastly, the third supplement I take is I take high dosages of vitamin C. I take a minimum of five grams daily. Yes, that's 5,000 milligrams. Now, I eat a bunch of times throughout the day, so I take maybe about 1,000 milligrams with each meal, right, four or five times a day. I take more after my workouts and before bed because those are the times I want to reduce cortisol levels. Vitamin C is really good for lowering cortisol, but also for boosting the immune system, reducing inflammation, and for building collagen, which is very important for hair and skin. So, to recap... The number one supplement, if money's always an issue, is take stress and cortisol relief. 
And then additionally, number two would be inflame and pain relief. Again, both of these have many other health benefits. And of course, you know, everyone should be taking extra vitamin C. It's inexpensive. Take at least 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams daily. Again, you know, you could just take 1,000 milligrams two or three times, spread it out because it is water soluble. Again, I've put direct links to everything below in the description area. And in addition to other in you know, information about inflammation, about stress, about lifestyle improvements, and so forth. So scroll down, take a look right now while it's fresh on your mind. And remember, the sooner you start, the better your hair and the less damage. Remember, earlier in the study, it said the damage is permanent and irreversible. So start now. So there you have it. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm wishing you a very happy and healthy day. And subscribe if you haven't, all right? And also, more importantly, let me know what topics you want me to cover and what you've learned in today's topic, in today's video. What you want more questions, you know, questions about, maybe I wasn't clear, let me know. This is all about you. This is all about me helping you achieve your health, fitness, and longevity goals. Thanks very much. Wishing you a happy and healthy day.